are still in the series Beyond the Signs, and for the past three weeks, we've been looking at, uh, in the book of John, the signs that, or the miraculous signs that Jesus performed in the book of John. And of course, we know that there are so many signs that Jesus did. However, in God's wisdom, God, you know, led, guided, inspired John to write only of seven signs. So, nakita na po natin nung mga nakaraang linggo, yung unang sign is the Jesus turning water into wine. And then after that, we saw that uh, that's not just, it's not just that he did that, it speaks of him being a redeemer, that he redeems us from shame, he redeems us from from things that minsan tayo rin yung may kagagawa, no? But that's who God is. He's compassionate. He's full of mercy. And then we looked at the healing of the official son wherein um, the power of Jesus is not limited by location, no? Just, just the same as when he spoke the word and there was light, there, there were animals, there were trees, there was la- land, there was you know, sky and moon and stuff like that. So also when he spoke the word, healing came. But it's really about him, that he is the one who brings peace in our hearts. He is the Lord of the Sabbath, that he is beyond any traditions that we can have, that he is a God who will pursue you and seek you out because he loves you. Can you encourage someone today? Just tell that person God loves you. I love you, God loves you. Okay, so today we're, we'll continue to look at the book of John. Uh, as John said in John chapter 1, verse 14, he said, And the word became flesh, referring to Jesus, that Jesus is God, but he became man, and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. Hindi po to chismis ni John, hindi niya guni-guni, hindi haka-haka, hindi kuro-kuro, nakita niya, narinig niya, naamoy niya, kasama niyang kumain si Jesus, kasama niyang nagpumunta sa mga bayan-bayan ng Israel. Okay, and he has seen his glory, glory as of the only son from the father, full of grace and truth. That whenever Jesus relates with us, deals with us, encourages us, blesses us, rebukes us, corrects us, it's always full of grace and full of truth. And John said that these things are written, these things are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, that we will believe that he is the Christ, he is the, the, the Savior, he's the Messiah, but he's also the Son of God. He is Lord. He calls the shots. He's the one who tells us what to do. We're not the one who tells him what to do. So that when we believe in him, by believing, we may have life in his name. And that's what we want. We want to have life that is truly life. A life that is full of the goodness and the faithfulness of God. And today we're going to look at the feeding of the 5,000. And if you have your Bibles with you, please open it to John chapter 6. We're going to read from John chapter 6, verse 1 to 15, and then we're going to move from there. Uh, the feeding of the 5,000, of course, is sa mga pinaka familiar na kwento sa Bible. All the four Gospels have this story. At alam ko, bata pa lang kayo. Narinig niyo na to sa school niyo, sa simbahan, pinag-uusapan, kinuwento sa ng mga magulang mo, tita mo, teacher mo, kaibigan mo. Okay? So, but please, let us have this attitude that even ilang, kahit ilang beses na natin narinig to, let's have this attitude that God, you will, you will still speak to us and minister to us through your word this afternoon. After this, Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a large crowd was following him because they saw the signs that he was doing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. Now the Passover feast of the Jews was at hand. Lifting up his eyes then, and seeing that a large crowd was coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? And he said, He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, 200 denarii would not buy any bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they for so many? 
Jesus said, have the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down, about 5,000 in number. Jesus then took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to, to those who were seated. So also f the fish, as much as they wanted. And when they had eaten their fill, he told his disciples, gather up the leftover fragments that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up and filled 12 baskets with fragments from the, from the five barley loaves left by those who had been or who had eaten. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they said, this is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. Perceiving then that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, Jesus withdrew again to the mountain by himself. So alam natin yung kwento. Familiar sa atin. Ang daming tao sumusunod kay Jesus, nakita nila yung sign, pinagaling yung lumpo, daming sign na ginagawa ni Jesus. So ngayon, curious na sila. Pero grabe, 5,000. Dami, mas marami pa dito sa atin ngayon. At hindi lang yun, sabi, sa ibang mga gospels, no, sa ibang account, 5,000 not counting the women and the children. So siguro mga 10,000, o baka 15,000, no? yung dami. Pero bakit ang dami? Ang dami sumusunod kay Jesus. So tingnan natin kung ano yung, anong nangyari dun sa kwento. And from here, we're going to move on because um, before when we preach about this, there's so, so much that you can preach about the feeding of the 5,000. But because we want to go beyond the signs, we're going to look at, may na, nag-preach din kasi si Jesus. So kung baga, tong feeding of the 5,000, parang appetizer lang to ni Jesus. Sa gusto na, niya talagang sabihin at matutunan ng mga tao nung panahon na yun. Na sana, Pakinggan natin at matutunan din natin ngayon. Okay? So, what's the situation? A multitude of people following Jesus because they saw the signs. The Passover feast was near. That's important. Kasi pag sinabi mong Passover feast, ito yung last supper nila sa Egypt bago sila umalis. Okay? After the ten plagues, sabi ni Pharaoh, sige, umalis na kayo. So, bago sila umalis, no, ito yung Passover meal nila. Yung nag pumatay sila ng lamb, nilagay yung, yung, ano, yung, uh, yung blood sa doorpost para hindi mamatay ang kanilang firstborn. Okay? The Passover feast. And every year, this is being celebrated by the Israelites. Okay? Now, there was not enough resources to feed the large crowd. Daming sumama eh. Daming. More than 5,000, including the, the women and the children. And nung tinanong ni Jesus si Philip, Ang kagandahan doon, alam na ni Jesus kung anong mangyayari. So, kahit mukhang may kulang, si Jesus hindi nagpapanik. Sa buhay natin, kahit tingin natin parang may kulang, si Jesus hindi nagpapanik. Si God hindi nagpapanik dahil alam niya ang gagawin niya sa sitwasyon mo. Naniniwala ka ba doon? Alam ni God ang gagawin niya sa sitwasyon mo. So, sabi ni Philip, no, siguro si Philip, kung classmate ko siya dati, it's either, no elementary ako, no, siguro it's either tatabi ako sa kanya, Bakit? Eh, matalino sa math si Philip eh. Matalino siya, matalinaw ako. Perfect combination. Diba? Sino sa atin dito, mga matatalinaw dati? O, oh, wag na natin gawin yun, ha? Yung isa nagturo pa. Diba? Or, aalis ako kasi makuwenta si Philip. May mga, mga kaibigan ba kayong ganun? Yung makuwenta? Uy, ako nagbayad nung isang araw, ikaw naman ngayon. Yung mga ganun, yung makuwenta, diba? So sabi niya, uh, sabi niya, let me compute it, Lord. Nung tinanong siya, saan tayo kukuha ng pagkain dito? Let me compute it. Tapos nag-compute, sabi niya, the solar system, you know, the sun is in the center and the moon. And so ganun. So, sabi niya, wala tayong magagawa, Lord. Kulang. Sabi ni Andrew naman, may nakita siyang bata, sabi niya, Lord, meron dito, pero, ano lang eh, five barley loaves, yung pinakamababa pang tinapay. No? Poor man's bread. Tsaka dalawang tilapia lang yung kasama, yung laman. So, meron Lord, pero kulang. Nangyari, nagkaroon naman ang sitwasyon na ganun. Either, Lord, tuition na. Wala talaga. Or, Lord, meron kaya lang kulang. Yung prayer mo, yung parang kay Joshua, Lord, ipahinto mo ang araw ngayon. Dahil bukas, bayaran eh. Lord, huminto ngayon. Yung ganun, ganun yung prayer mo. Kahit anong compute mo, wala talaga eh. Diba? Yung iba, tuition. Yung iba, sa karir. Yung iba, 
sa love life, kahit anong compute mo. Wala talaga, Lord, inimbita ko na sa church, sumama, so, sa iba naman nanligaw. Yung mga ganon. So, wala talaga. Pero ang kagandahan, alam ni God ang sitwasyon, alam niya kung ano yung gagawin. Okay? So, what did Jesus do? Jesus miraculously, Jesus miraculously multiplies five loaves and two fish to feed everyone. Yung kakulangan mo, hindi nagpapanik si God. Walang-wala kay God yan. At may gagawin si God. Encourage mo naman yung, yung katabi mo ngayon, may gagawin si God sa sitwasyon mo. Yun. Diba? Yung ganyang, 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 ganyang sentence, dalawa yan. Either encouraging yan, naku, may gagawin si God sa sitwasyon ko, yes. Or, alam mo kasi may ginagawa kang mali, may gagawin si God sa sitwasyon ko. Yung ganun. So either way, may gagawin si God sa sitwasyon mo. Okay? Now, you, how you respond to that, yun yung titingnan natin because we have to go beyond the signs. At nung kumain lahat, hindi lang to yung enough, sabi doon, when they had their fill, yung sobra kang bundat, yung para pumunta ka sa fiesta sa probinsya, yung pagkatapos ng isang bahay, palabas ka, hindi mo kilala, uy, dito naman. <laughs> si mga taga-probinsya dito. Di ba ganyan sa atin? Oh, di ba? Yung bundat ka na yung Pagkatapos ng tatlong araw, pag dighay mo, yung kinain mo pa rin ng tatlong araw, yun yung dighay. Ganun, busog na busog sila. Ganun naman si God mag-provide, no? Tindi. Bakit? Dahil alam niya ang sitwasyon mo at may gagawin siya sa sitwasyon mo. Pero eto yung napansin ng mga tao, grabe to. Ha? Sinunda natin to, naghihilang ng sick. Ngayon, first hand na experience natin yung miracle. Hindi peke. Eh, hindi yung kunwari lang nag-o-opera. Di ba yung mga o-operahan kita, kamay lang gamit ko, yung mga ganun-ganun. Hindi to ganun, hindi, hindi abracadabra to. Totoo to. So yung mga tao, wow, grabe. Ibang klase to. And remember, Passover. Ang nasa isip ng mga tao, malapit ang Passover, nire-recall nila ang sitwasyon sa Egypt. Naka, nakalaya sila sa Egypt. Anong ginawa ni Moses sa disyerto? Nare-recall nila yan. Kaya eto ang Sabi nila, the people perceived that he is the prophet that Moses spoke about and they want to make him king. That he is the prophet. Kasi sabi ni, ni, ni Moses sa Deuteronomy, the Lord will raise up another prophet like me, a prophet like myself. Listen to him. They are waiting for this prophet and they perceive this must be, this must be him. So, gawin natin siyang king. Rightly so, because Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords. Pero, ang reaction ni Jesus, kakaiba. Jesus withdraws from the crowd. Lord, diba, you're here to advance the kingdom of God and you are king. Why did you withdraw? Why did you step back? Oops, wag muna ako dito sa 2 p.m. Oops, wag muna dito sa mga taga-victory. Bakit kaya? Gusto natin siyang gawing king. Imagine ninyo, nandun tayo. Busog ka, Alam mo yun? Di ba? Tapos, huy, king, king, pag smile mo, may tilapia ka pa, yung mga ganun. Grabe. Jesus withdraws. Why? Bakit kaya? Could it be that the enthusiasm of these people, could it be that our enthusiasm to elevate Him as King in our lives is not really for who He really is? Not for His purpose, but for our purpose? Could it be the reason that Jesus withdraws? Could it be that we're so enthusiastic, we're excited, but we're not excited for the real Jesus? We're excited for the Jesus that we have made up in our minds. The, you know, that liberal Jesus, the cool Jesus, you know, the anything goes Jesus, the anyone I want him to be Jesus. And so Jesus withdraws. And hopefully you'll read this in your, in your homes. In John 6, it says that after he withdrew, the people settled. Some of them went home probably. Some of them found lodging somewhere else. Some of them probably slept there in their tents. I, I don't know. But the disciples went to a boat and half, you know, three miles off the shore, they were supposed to go back to go to the other side of the lake. And then here comes Jesus at night walking in water. Okay? He was walking in water. But wait, that one, that sign is for next week. Okay, so ngayon, pagkatapos niya mag-walk sa water, punta na tayo, nandun na siya sa kabila. Sabi nila, when they found him on the other side, 
of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? So that story, when did you come here, is for next week. Okay? Not for today. Okay? So John 6, 26, Jesus answered them, Eto na. Eto na yung hint, yung reason kung bakit nag-withdraw si Jesus. Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. The crowd was right that Jesus was the prophet. However, they failed to see his glory. They failed to understand his real mission. Their excitement was that Jesus could take away their hunger. They were not excited yet, because they don't know yet, that Jesus is here to take away your sin. Remember what John said when he saw Jesus? Tinuro niya si Jesus at sabi niya, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away sin. And sometimes, yung iba sa atin natatakot tayong ibigay ang buhay natin sa Panginoon. Kasi ang tingin natin sa Panginoon, culturally, in religion natin, na ang Panginoon ay killjoy. Ako, kukunin niyan yung boyfriend mo. Papahiwalay ka niyan. Nako, yung karir mo hindi lalago kasi kailangan sumunod ka na ngayon sa patakaran. Naku, kukunin yan yung mag mong kotse. Kasi ayaw kang mag-enjoy ni God, kailangan simple lang. ba? Yung cardboard na kotse, okay na yun. Yung ganun yung tingin natin kay God. Pero in the Gospels, the only thing that Jesus will take from you is sin. That's the only thing. He will take away your sin. Tingnan mo yung katabi mo. Mukhang natanggal na, ba? Yung sin, ha? Hindi siya. Okay? He will take away your sin. And so the people were excited to make him king, but not according to his glory and his purpose. It was according to their purpose to make him king. And that's why Jesus withdrew and confronted them. Alam mo, yun yung excited. Excited sila. Uy, kailan ka dumating dito? Alam ko lang naman, pumunta kayo dito para. Yung ganun, Na, na, nangyari na ba sa'yo yun? Yung excited ka makita yung isang tao, tapos, uy, kumusta ka na? Hindi mo, hindi ka naman seryoso dyan sa pagkamusta mo eh. Di ba? No, kumusta mo lang ako kasi nilibre kita last week eh. Di ba? Totoo naman, di ba, minsan, may mga ganun tayong friends, gustong-gusto natin sila kasi ang mahilig man libre. Ganun lang. No? And so, Jesus continues to say, he said, but I said to you, okay, he says this later on, but it's a question for us. Here's what he said. I said to you that you have seen me and yet you do not believe. Could it be that we are following Jesus for the wrong reasons? Could it be that he reveals himself to us for who he is, but we do not believe it because we already have a mindset na hindi dapat ganito ka, Lord. Dapat ganito ka, Lord. Okay? Lord, tandaan mo, Lord. Promise mo, magkakaasawa ako. Invite ko siya sa church. Lord, i-born again mo. Lord, one week, Lord, ha? Okay. At dami tumatawa, parang tuto. Parang, nangyayari ba yan? Okay? Evangeligaw. Nangyayari yan kasi yun yung ginawa ko dati. Okay. May sinundan ako. Diba? Pero... Buti na lang. Ay, nandito yung asawa ko. Alam na alam niya yung kwentong yun. You have seen me and yet you do not believe. My prayer is this, that when God reveals himself to us, we will believe. Amen? God, search our hearts. Give us the grace to believe. In Jesus' name, amen. So when Jesus withdrew, it's because he wants them to understand this that he is, he came to be our utmost treasure, not just someone useful. They wanted to make Jesus king because, akalain mo na, pag king si Jesus, hindi na, hindi na tayo magugutom. Diba? Naalala nyo ba yun dati? Nung, ano, hindi pa ako krisyano, nung bago akong krisyano, naisip ko, sana bigay na lang ni God lahat ng ano, ng hingin ko. Di ba masaya ang buhay pag ganun? Kayo, Ako lang nakaisip noon. <laughs> wow! Okay? Pero ako naisip ko yun. Sana bigay mo na lang lahat ng 
Para mas smooth ang buhay, di ba? Kasi nga, pag naki Jesus ka, ang buhay ay masayang tunay. Ano pang mas, mas masaya kung i- pag binigay niya yung hinihiling mo? Masaya ka ba? Hindi. O masaya. Pag di niya binibigay, masaya ka ba? O. Magpakatotoo tayo. Sino sa atin dito? Nung hindi binigay yung prayer mo, pag victory group nyo, bro, may testimony ako. Grabe, nagpray ako agad. Hindi niya binigay. Um, ibang klase si God. Magpakatotoo na tayo. Okay? Dahil kahit sabihin natin, hindi, kahit hindi binigay ni God, talagang we just have to wait. Yes, we'll wait. Pero masaya ka ba? Hindi, di ba? So, sabi ko dati, bago pala, hindi pa ako krisyano at nilang bago ako krisyano, Lord, bigay mo naman lahat. Bigay mo na, para masaya buhay. But as I got to experience, as God changed my heart, because that's what He wants to do to your heart, to your desires. He wants to transform it. He wants your desires to be Him. Kaya nga, sobrang secure si God na magbitaw ng salita, delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desire of your heart. Because when you delight in Him, yung desire ng heart mo nagbabago. Binabago niya yan at siya ang pumapasok na Time will come, magigising ka na lang ang prayer mo ganito na, Lord, I, I need this, but for nothing else, let me have you. Katulad si David. God, I need this, I need that, but for if, even if that doesn't come, let me have you. And I tell you this, that's an amazing, amazing prayer because God will answer that prayer. And don't be afraid. Because when you have God, God is a good God who is what? Remember that preaching before? He is exuberant to do you good. He loves to do good to you. So let Jesus be your utmost treasure, not just someone useful in your life. His blessings, the feeding of the 5,000, pinakain niya, di ba? Finil niya yung appetite. Hindi naman niya sinabi na, kayo, puro pagkain lang kayo. Sumunod na lang kayo sa akin. Hindi ganun. He knows what you need. But here's the thing. Your blessing and my blessing, the blessings that God gave us, your healing, your provision, your restoration of relationships, guess what? That is for you and me. That's for us. But it is not about us. It is about the glory of God. And when we don't understand that, when we just settle for the sign, when we just settle for the things, that's when you start having a miserable Christian life. Because you and I, we miss the point. We miss the point that Jesus, Jesus should be our utmost treasure. I love what John Piper said. He said, Jesus Christ did not come into the world to assist you, to assist me in meeting desires we already had before we were born again. He came into the world to change your desires so that he is the main one. He is the main one. He will change our desires profoundly. And it's going to be amazing. Huwag kayong matakot. Huwag kayong matakot. Hindi masama ang Diyos natin. Hindi killjoy ang Diyos natin. Na kahit tulog ka dito, hindi ka kinikidlatan. Di ba? Kasi, pag mahal ka niya, masarap ang tulog. It's in the Bible. The Lord grants Sleep to those he loves. Psalm 127. I love that word. Okay? <laughs> probably if I'm not preaching, I'll be sleeping. Okay? And here he, he says, Do not work for food that perishes, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. Kinda, Lord, ano ba talaga? Are we going to work? Or are you just going to give it? Ano ginagawa ni God? Pinapaisip kanya. Do not work for food that perishes but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on Him, the Father has set His seal. Here's the thing. Jesus is not saying, do not work. Yung iba sa wala pang trabaho, nagpapalamon lang sa nanay, tatay nyo, tuwa na kayo. No, do not work daw, nai, ha? Do not work. <laughs> Hindi yan yung sinasabi ni God. Okay? Ang sinasabi niya, ang at most desire mo, let, that ni- let it not be for the things let it be for Him. Yan ang sinasabi niya. 
Yung value mo, yung identity mo, yung sinasabi kanina ni Heidi. Yung value mo, yung identity mo, yung security mo nasa kanya, hindi sa mga bagay-bagay. Bakit? Kasi ang bagay na luluma, nawawala. Naalala nyo ba nung nagkaroon kayo ng ganito? Naalala nyo yan? Konti pa lang yung nagkakaroon niyan dati. Diba? Yung iba sa inyo, ano yan? Sagera? Roger, Roger? Hindi, yan yung dating cellphone. Diba? So, naluma yan, napalitan. Pero ganito dati yan. Et, et, ganito dati yan. Pag meron ka niyan dati, wow, astig ka. Mahal yan. Hindi kaya niya ng mga, ng mga mortal. <laughs> diba? Hindi kaya ng mga mortal yan. Tapos, naging medyo dumami na. Naalala ko dati yung cellphone ko, Trium. Yung parang safeguard. Yung may antena. Tapos one-liner. Di ba? Tapos, sa jeep dati sa, sa TAF, sa Milasal, okay, but, but ako, hindi po ako nag-aaral doon. Nag-jeep lang ako. Dumadaan lang. Alam mo yun? Dati, pag ginamit mo yung cellphone mo, pag dumaan ka doon sa Milasal TAF, nako, more, more often than not, mahablot yun. Dabi mga snatcher dyan. Di ba? Yung klase ng phone ko, Eto na yung tipong mahulog, maiwan sa jeep, hahabulin ako. Cellphone nyo po. Ganon siya. Diba? And I love that phone because... Why? It's... Grabe, anti-theft ang phone na yun. Okay? Pero sa ngayon, parang feeling natin, ano? A gadget mo, doon ka kumuha ng value. Pag yung kaibigan mo, wala niyan. Ikaw meron, parang, alam mo yun, mas either guwapo ka, mas maganda. Hindi ko alam, mas matalino ka. Parang tingin mo, yung value mo tumataas. Guys, yung iPhone 6 mo, yung iPhone 7, maluluma din yan. Darating na yung iPhone 10. Mapa, mapapalitan din yung iPhone 10 mo. Okay? Ang value mo, hindi nakasalalay dyan sa gadget mo. Huwag kang mayaban. Ikaw, nakaganyan. Yung katabi mo, maigzi lang. Dahil baka balang araw, dalawa na yung sa kanya. Di ba? Mag... Na pinagtatawa na natin to pero very true to sa atin. Bakit? Kasi bag pa lang eh. Bag pa lang pag naka-LV ka, eh, di ba? Yung mga lumang bag mo. O kaya yung gawa sa Los Vanyos. Yun pa lang parang, pag medyo yung bag mo, parang dun lang sa tabi-tabi, parang ganun ka lang mag... Pero pag LV yan, parang... Eh, actually, hindi ako marunong maglakad ng ano. But, so parang ganun, di ba? So, yung value natin, no? Eto pa. Ay, huwag niyong sabihin hindi totoo to. Ilan na sa atin ang nagsasabi na pag may nakasakay na isang tao sa coaching ganyan, guwapo nung, grabe, guwapo, grabe. Gra- Alam mo yun, so tayo tuloy, yung ano natin is, Lord, elevate kitang king. Pero hindi para sa purpose, para sa purpose ko. Kasi gusto ko niyan. There's nothing wrong with those things. Get, gusto mo niyan, humingi ka kay God. Diba? Pero sana malaman mo na kahit wala ka niyan, ang ganda mo. Ang guwapo mo. Mahalaga ka. Valuable ka. Yung iba tinina yung katabi at ayaw maniwan. <laughs> yung kahit yung shoes mo, dalawa lang, isa lang. Ay, wag naman isa. <laughs> at least, pares, Okay. Yung karir mo kahit nag-uumpisa ka pa lang, guess what? You're valuable. Alam mo, sa sobrang distorted ng value natin, yung iba sa inyo dito, lumaki, ang ganda-ganda nyo, pero lumaki kayo, akala nyo, ang pangit nyo. It's because people have spoken words to you. People have done something to you. And I want you to understand this. God loves you. And you are valuable to God. My hope is that He will be your utmost desire. Then, they said to him, what must we do? What must we do para ma-accomplish namin to? Punta sa church, basa ng Bible, anong, anong mang kailangan? What must we do to be doing the works of God? And Jesus answered them, this is the work of God, that you believe in Him, whom He has sent. That you be- that simple lang. Simple lang. Let's go, not just beyond the science, let's go beyond the comfortable chairs. Let's go beyond the air-conditioned hall. Let's go beyond the songs, the raising of hands. Let's go beyond that and get to know 
your God. It's not about how good you pray. It's about how good your God is. Go beyond the only thing that God wants you to work on. Believe. Now, I'm not saying don't go to church anymore. I'm not saying don't join a small group. I'm not saying don't read your Bible. But what I'm saying is, do you understand why you're doing that? Do you know why? John chapter 6, 30 says, So they said to him, Then what sign do you do that we may see and believe you? What work do you perform? This is very funny, you know? They saw the sign that he was healing the sick. They're following him. They experienced the sign na mabusog. Tapos ngayon sabi nila, Anong sign ang gagawin mo? See, it seems like they believe, but they don't really believe. They believe, yet it doesn't honor Jesus. Yung panganiniwala nila. Kaya siguro darating ang panahon, sabi nga ng Panginoong Jesus, na darating ang panahon at the end of the of days, when He comes back, that people will go to Him and say, Jesus, did we not perform miraculous signs in Your name? Jesus, did we not drive out demons in Your name? And Jesus would tell them, away from me, I never knew you. Could it be that we're just going to church, but we miss out on God? That He reveals Himself to us, yet we do not believe because we have our own agenda. It's the Passover na alala niling ginawa ni Moses, kaya sabi nila, our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Anong pinaparinggan nila kay Jesus? Sige nga, magpakain ka nga ulit. Di ba? Magpakain ka nga ulit. And Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. Don't miss it. It's not the stuff. The blessings are great. Mana, unbelievable yun. Grabe yun. Kung wala yung mana, ginamit yun ng Panginoon para mabuhay sila. But it's beyond that. Go beyond the signs. Go beyond the religious duty of coming to church, of reading your Bible, of praying, go beyond it, get to know the utmost desire of your heart, Jesus Christ. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, sir, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Again, believe. Believe, I pray that you will believe that not only is He going to be your utmost desire, but when you make Him your utmost desire, then Jesus came to fully satisfy your soul, not just to fill your appetite. Aanhin mo ang mga, mga cars na yon, mga gadgets, yung magandang karir, aanhin mo if, if you're living a life of loneliness. Aanhin mo yon. Yung daming mga mayayaman na lonely. No? Marami rin mga mahirap na lonely. So, syempre, mas maganda na mayayaman na lonely kaysa mahirap na lonely. But, but that's not the point. Pilosopo nyo, ha? The point is this. With all those things, they will not satisfy. They will fill your appetite. But what good is it if you have all those stuff, but you're depressed, you feel helpless, you feel you're not valuable, you always have to have stuff to feel valuable. You're living a life of unforgiveness and turmoil. There is no peace in your heart. What good is it running after them? For some of you, you need to hear this from the Lord. Come to me, he says. All of you are weary. Some of you are weary. And I will give you rest, says the Lord. And that it's time. It's time to go back. Time to turn away from sin. Time to just understand that He is a God who is full of grace. He will bless you. He will have compassion on you. But He is a God who is full of truth as well. He will command you to say no to sin. He will tell you that if you love me, you will obey my commands. And please do not fear that command. Do not fear that, that you will obey Him because 
when he is your utmost desire, when you understand he can fully satisfy your soul, that is the greatest joy you will ever feel when you obey God. He continues to say, all that the Father gives me will come to me, and whatever or whoever comes to me, I will never cast out. For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but the will of him who sent me. The obedient son telling us to be obedient. And this is an encouraging word for us. Everyone, whoever, say whoever. So it doesn't matter kung anong school ka, anong pamilya mo, anong background mo, anong pangarap mo, anong position mo, anong church mo, whoever comes to Jesus, he will never tell you, talk to the hand, never. He will embrace you, he will welcome you, because this is his promise. He said, and this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. This word is very precious to me. This verses, 38, 39. Nung nag sa sa buhay kristyano ko, disobedient po ako. Okay? Tigas ulo. Kala mo, alam niya na yung ginagawa niya. Ayaw ko magpa-disciple. Hindi ko kailangan ang discipleship. Hindi ko kailangan ang small group. Alam mo yun? I love God. He is my king but for my purpose. So, as a new Christian, I got from one relationship into another, all ungodly, ungodly relationship. And I came to a point that I said to myself, Di, ayoko na nito. Di ko na kaya. So ngayon, kinausap ko si God. That was a Sunday. I was again near Taft Avenue. And kinausap ko si God. Sabi ko, Lord, May mga generation ko makaka-relate dito. Naalala nyo yung sina Paquito Diaz, sina Romy Diaz, sina Ramon Revilla, sasabihin niya, mga bata, huling lakad na natin to. Pagkatapos nito, titino na tayo. At kung kailan pa sila huling lakad, doon pa sila namatay. Diba? So ako, parang ganun yung sitwasyon ko. Sabi ko kay God, Lord, parang huling lakad ko na to kasi hindi ko na kaya eh. So kung hindi ko kayang sumunod sa iyo, babalik na ako sa mundo. Huling, huling service ko na to. Dalawa pa lang location ng Victory noon. U-Belt and Victory uh, Mac- uh, Makati Sports Club. So punta ako Makati Sports Club. 15 minutes from TAF, Lasal, uh, actually Pedro Hill to Makati Sports Club. Sabi ko, 15 minutes na lang, Lord. Pag hindi ako umabot, ang dami kong ultimatum kay God. <laughs> Tinatawag ko pa siyang Lord, pero okay na susunod, no? Pag hindi po ako umabot sa service, malate ako, kahit isang minuto lang, hindi na po ako tutuloy. So, by God's grace, 15 minutes, jeep lang po. Wala pa po akong sasakyan, hindi pa ako ganyan kagwapo. Okay. So, jeep, mm, pagdating, no, pagbukas ko sa Makati Sports Club, umpisa namang magpapal. Alam mo yun, timing na timing, hindi ako na late. So, pasok ko din. So, ano yung una? Yung mabilis, di ba? Yung mga, ah, yung kinikinakanta natin, di ba? Pag mga ganun yung kanta, parang, yeah, yun, yung iba tumatalon. Nasa likod lang ako, parang, kayo mga nakatayo dyan. Parang gano'n, nasa likod ako. Kasi huli na eh. Tapos, praise song pa lang, fast song, tumatalo nyo yung nagpapalakpakan, sumisigaw, saya-saya nila, umiiyak po ako. Kasi yung words para sa akin. And then God reminded me this word, that He will not lose me. He will not lose me. And so I surrendered my life to God again. And I said, God, if that's the case, then help me. Help me say no to sin. Help me to turn away, to repent. And some of you need to hear that today. God will not lose you. You think, sama kong asawa. Meron akong sideline na babae. God will not lose you. God nagbabrib ako. God will not lose you. That's how precious you are to God. Can you turn to someone and say, God will not lose you? Ganun kakamahal ni God. God will not lose you. And so with these words, I realized how true this is. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life, I am the bread of life. Go beyond the signs. Go beyond the worship service. Go beyond the songs. Go beyond the Bible reading. Get to know your God who loves you so much. 
who will always be there for you and not against you. Because Jesus came to be your ultimate provision, not just your daily provider. Your ultimate provision. When you understand that, kahit anong mayayari sa buhay mo, kahit anuman ang challenges, anong pinapagawa sa'yo ni God, there's going to be joy and peace and amazing things. Jesus said this, your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. All the provision, hindi man natin madadala pag namatay na tayo. But God has promised us that He will take care of our bodies forever. Someday we will resurrect, we will have a resurrected body, you will not feel hunger, you will, there's no fear, there's no depression, there's no helplessness, no hopelessness. Lahat tayo, wala na magsasabi sa yung pangit ka. Totoo yun. Because God will give you a resurrected body and you will see yourself for how much He loves you. And Jesus promised this, that I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And that bread I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. When he sacrificed himself, everything, everything made sense. Let him be your utmost desire. I pray that you will experience that he is the one who can fully satisfy your soul. And I pray that you will see him, God, that as the ultimate, the greatest provision, that when you pray, yes, God, I need the tuition fee, I need, I need this career, I'm praying, I'm praying for my family, for my marriage, but God, you are already the greatest provision. And everything else is just a matter of time. Let's all stand. Father, I pray, God, that we will just go beyond the signs, beyond everything here, beyond the religiosity of culture, even the religiosity of victory, beyond anything that we can offer, God. Give us the grace to know you, to seek you, to love you, to obey you, to enjoy you every day of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to call Pastor JR just to and us in prayer. Thank you, Pastor Rev. I believe God wants to speak to those who are already believers here, who have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Maybe you're here right now and just like what Pastor Rev shares, Karina, you felt like you're losing it. Hindi ko na kaya. Ang hirap na. Feeling ko I'm gonna fail. I don't have any more faith. No more faith. Zero faith. In fact, deficit na siya. Obus na siya. I believe God wants to speak to you right now. God wants to tell you something. If that's you, just you need the help of God. As an act of humility, will you please raise up your hands before God? Just saying, Lord, I'm about to lose it, God. Kuna kaya, Lord. I see those hands. It's between you and God. It's not for me. It's between you and God. God sees your hands. God sees your heart. Thank you, Father, for this act of humility. Now let me encourage you this verse. It says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13, it says there, If we are faithless, if you have no more faith left, Sarili mo ngayon. He remains faithful. For he cannot deny himself. If you're afraid, if God will disown you, the reason why you will have the confidence that he will not disown you is because he cannot disown himself. It is very nature to be faithful. That's how faithful God is. Not only to you, but he's faithful to himself. I'm a father and I was hugging my daughter kanina and I was saying, I wish I could have a father moment kasi wala akong tatay. Wala akong memory ng tatay ko. God was just telling me today, reminding me, I will never lose you. Just like your heart for your daughter. That's my heart for you as well. 
even if you are faithless. God, you see the hearts and the hands that's raised up today. I pray, God, that you will begin to restore, God. Not just answered prayers, God, but Lord, change our hearts, Lord God. That you will be our utmost treasure. You will be our everything. To the point wherein we will be willing to lose anything in this world except you. Change our hearts, God. Change our hearts, Lord, for your glory and for your honor. We thank you, God, for this preaching. We thank you, God, that uh, the words that have been spoken here, Lord God, will be like a seed in our hearts that will begin to grow and will change us from the inside out. For your glory alone, God. We honor you, Lord. We praise you. In Jesus' name, and all the people say, Amen and Amen.